Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How about you? Oh, pretty good. Tired. Yeah. And coffee. <laughs> and co- Tired and coffee is how I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> coffee, yeah. Sitting right across from me. Right across from you. Mm. For probably a good hour here. So This could be the third time that your family has exposed <laughs> me to coronavirus. This could turn into a super spreader <clears throat> event. <laughs> yeah, I think you need more than one other person. Like I, I think I think super spreader functions under the same uh, the same rules as mass shooting. Oh yeah, yeah. like so you gotta have more than five. Yeah, is it five? I thought they dropped it to three or <laughs> oh, something. Oh, it may be. Like it may be. I, I have no clue. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, yeah, maybe it's just three deaths, three injuries, three. I don't know. I I, I can't keep up with this I, stuff. I, I, I know that the number keeps changing to make it look like it's happening more often. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> so. Among things that you can't talk about, I suppose. Uh, all right, so this is what I what I teased to you um, before we got started here. Yeah. Is uh, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was online the other day, and um, I was talking about this game, and um, it, it was like in a chat with with the game, right? Yeah. And I said um, that I asked for if anybody had any advice for this particular matchup. Um, cause I said, uh, you know, I kept, I keep getting raped by these guys in the, in the thing and yeah. anybody have any tips. Yeah. And so the first response I got was, well, the first tip would be don't use the R word. The R word. Are you kidding me? And I, like, I let the whole thing go, but my first thought was to respond. Well, I didn't say retarded. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Just See, to really trigger something. Yeah, I was gonna say in those situations, I like I can't help it. Like <laughs> that would have been the my it's next. It's a chat post. I'd had to type, you know. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. Yeah. Especially in those settings, like yeah, like, like trolls exist. <laughs> and I would have quickly become one. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> um, well, and I, I was. So then I was like, I was taking a poll in my office. I was like, did this become a bad word? Yeah, all right. Um, because I'm really confused, like. <laughs> there was another thing that I almost said in, in response, but I can't repeat that on the podcast. Yeah. Um, something about uh, forcibly something without consent. Anyway, um, <laughs> but go. then I was like, I was kind of confused about this. There's so many things that you can't say now. Yeah, yeah. And so, but one of the thoughts was like, what if I'd have said these guys are murdering me? Yeah. Somehow now you could certainly make an argument that murder is worse than rape. Yeah. Um, I think you can make an argument on both sides of that, and I'm not sure that I'm convinced that murder is worse than rape. But I, I, yeah, I, I was going to say they're both in pretty <laughs> bad categories, and I don't really want to get into trying to rape them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is the worst offense? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the the other thought I had was like, if you can't even use these words, like, how do you discuss anything? Yeah, when, like how do you resolve any kind of conflict or whatever if you can't even you can't even use the words? Yeah, like I just I'm not really that concerned about offending people, or I wouldn't have opened the podcast with this <laughs> with this conversation this discussion, yeah. especially sprung on you like that. Yeah, no, that's absurd though, man. Like I I Don't can't use the R word. Can't use the R word and it be rape and not like I get at least like. I mean, I'll use the word retarded. Like, it doesn't bother me. But I can at least kind of see the justification for that. I mean, that is... I I get it. But rape? Are you kidding me? Yeah. (laughs) Like, I mean... I had a friend growing up. His name was Leonardo. Yeah. We had all kinds of nicknames for him. Yeah. Including Nerdo and Tardo and, you know... Yeah, yeah. Just... Just joking around, yeah, like I, I mean, I, 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 but I at least see the the justification for for retarded. Like mm-hmm. I mean, and, and like I use that word, so don't take. I'm not. Yeah. Like, I'm not above using it, but I at least see where. Like, yeah, that's not cool. Like I can see, I can see where somebody be like, hey, that's not cool, man. Yeah. But rape. <laughs> My little brother's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because if you have somebody in your life, like I can get where that could be mm-hmm. offensive. Like, and I do, I get that. Um, yeah, uh, but at the this coming from someone who will freely use it, but but I get. The, Are we gonna like change uh, flame retardant to something else? I mean, <laughs> yeah, 
to to retard is to slow down and yeah. is another definition and yeah. actually um rape uh another definition is something like you know an outrageous violation or whatever it doesn't have to ha- have anything to do with non-consensual sex yeah um i mean there are additional meanings to these words yeah. and and actually um rape uh if i'm not mistaken the word originally was about abduction really yeah um so you know if you're reading some really old text and uh, it says something about that they um you know that they bound and raped these people as they took them away they might not it might not be <laughs> non-consensual sex it might just mean that they're they're abducting these people they're kidnapping them yeah yeah right no fair enough um, like I say, I, uh, that it's just, not used in that sense anymore. Anymore, but. <laughs> obviously, but no, that's still that's absolutely absurd. So, how did the poll in your office go? Like, how did people you talk to feel about <laughs> yeah, it? Well, the people in my office were like, "That's absurd." Okay, so so I'm <laughs> yeah. not like the lone ranger here. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, but we, you know, where we live, there's well, less yeah. of a, a concern about like using the wrong words. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I certainly know some people that I could have asked that question to that they would have been like, yeah, I can't believe that you said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you, know. <laughs> you don't know me that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, tell me I can't use a word and right? see how frequently it comes out of my mouth after that. Yeah, every <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. Um, yeah, so huh, that's, strange world we're living in. That's, it is a strange, strange world. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, no, we're, we're, we'll move on from that. I, I shouldn't have even brought it up, probably. It was, nah, it's, it, it was kind of funny to me, though. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, I was really irritated. It was kind of funny to me. <laughs> right. Um, and who knows? That person could have been like some 14-year-old that's been very well-trained. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I would almost make that guess. Although yeah. they could have been a full-grown adult that's been well-trained. <laughs> yeah, so. <that's> <laughs> he spent four years in college. Exactly. <laughs> took his training seriously. Liberal like. arts school. <laughs> yep. Um, so. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So let's let's get into you know news. Yeah. Um, I mean, I figure we kind of pick up where we left off more or less with these um, these Biden mandates. Yeah, I tell you, man, like this is, I, he has really, and I feel like intentionally, like stirred a hornet's nest here. Yeah. I mean, like, there's something of a mutiny going on in this country about this. Oh, yeah. Um, rightfully so. I mean, like this is, this, this is, this is the big one. Like this is, this is a big deal. Yeah. Even Ma Kay said that she wouldn't. Oh, yeah. Her. Which, um, I mean, that's only so that she can get reelected. I'm sure that it, ideologically she's on board. Well, she's, she, I, I had said the same thing. I don't know if I had that discussion on the podcast or not. I don't think we did. But, um, yeah, because she has been kind of on the other side of that conversation most of this time. <laughs> and, um, but when this came down, she's, I mean, she's on board with other Republican governors to oppose this. Yeah. I mean, she was very critical of people that weren't getting, um, the vaccine and she was strongly urging people to get the vaccine, but she had said a couple of times, like, we can't make people do this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, she's not, <laughs> but, but she was pretty rough on people who hadn't gotten it. And, yeah. and I think that that was, she was bound to pay the price at the polls if this, if this situation hadn't arose. Yeah. Now I think she'll actually be all right because she, now she's coming down on the right side. So mm. she'll, she'll end up being all right. But if this situation hadn't arose, there were plenty of people that were ready to vote her out. Yeah. So uh, there still are. <laughs> oh, there still are. But there was, I think there was more of them prior to this. Well, you know, and again, it comes back around to um, federal interference with uh, private contracts or private business. Yeah. Um, and whether you think that that's acceptable or not. Now, I say that we've really crossed a line here. Like, there's been some level of this for some time, but um, but you're really pushing hard up against fascism at, at this point. Oh yeah. And. Um, and, and again, it's a theme that comes up a lot on the podcast, which is the federal government using private business to do the things that it's not allowed to do. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the big examples, of course, is, has been the, uh, the spying, the uh, privacy invasions, um, yeah. getting data from companies because the government can't go get the data. If they considered themselves restricted by the Constitution, which... Clearly they don't. Which but, is questionable. Yeah. But... Um, at the very least, they can 
give the appearance or at least put themselves in a position where they can make a case that they didn't violate anything by threatening, by encouraging, by whatever yeah. uh, private business to do it for them. Yeah. And um, and this is another uh, another instance of that. I mean, I imagine that what happened was uh, that even the White House attorneys, whose job it is to figure out how to work around the Constitution, said, well, you can't just make a federal mandate because there's no way that we can legally justify that and have it stand. Yeah. So this is what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> just bully the corporations <laughs> into doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have enough control over corporations. You can threaten them with enough things, with fines, taxes, um, licenses, etc., cetera, uh, that they will fall in line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they have no choice. Like, yeah. it's you can't even really blame the company, even though, like, I kind of do because I think they should stand up to that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you have to understand they're a business there to make money, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not there to protect your rights. That's not their job. Yeah. Well, and so... What is nice to see about this is that there is kind of an uproar about this. And this is an opportunity for us as libertarians to try and explain some things. Now now that we have we have the foot in the door on now, something like this. Now that we have your attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but you can talk to almost anybody, yeah. certainly around here. Oh, um, yeah. but, uh, but I think nationwide, uh, uh, there's, cer there's almost certainly a majority of people and maybe a pretty big majority of people that right. disagrees with the idea of the federal government interfering to this degree with, um, employment contracts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, that really believes that the government shouldn't have anything to do like that, that businesses should be able to hire who they want under whatever conditions that they want Yeah. in the, in the context of this saying that this is like, Oh man, this is a big step past what they should be able to do. You know, uh, and so you start making the argument like, yeah, well, you know, government shouldn't have uh, the ability to interfere with private contracts, to define private contracts between a, a business and its employees or whatever. Yeah. And you can probably, as long as you're talking about this, get people to, to agree with that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, anybody who's really thinking about it is going to say, well, but they do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the opportunity. Like, hopefully, this is that step too far where you can start convincing people to maybe roll back some of the stuff that they've permitted for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, all the requirements, uh, all the legislative requirements about what kind of um, of perks need to be offered, uh, right. like healthcare. Uh, yeah. Healthcare has been a disaster um, since it was federally mandated that that businesses supply health health insurance, excuse me, yeah. um, to their employees. I mean, the two practically mean the same thing at this point anyway, but, yeah. um, but okay. Like, all right. Remember the last time government did this, yeah. uh, with the, uh, affordable care act and what a mess that's been. How much have your health insurance costs gone up? Yeah. Mine are about three or four times what they were before. Oh yeah. Mine's crazy. Um, and, and now I have a, uh, I work for a company that pays for half of it. Yeah. And it's still like three times as much as I paid when I was paying all of it myself. Yeah. Um, and if, in fact, my portion, just my half yeah. of my health insurance, my monthly health insurance premium is higher than the Cobra extension I got when I moved back here after I left Atlanta. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Now you now you're getting kind of rolling with this. Like, oh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, government got involved in that. Screwed that up, too. Yep. Yeah. Then you start pushing on things that are a little harder. Minimum wage. Yeah. Well, yeah. minimum wage is the same kind of thing. It's government interfering with private contracts. It's saying that you can only make a contract under these certain conditions. Yeah. Whereas the truth is that as long as the employer and the employee both agree to it, yeah. that should be all it needs. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Like, yeah. and, well, and you cut, you, and we've talked about this before on the podcast, but anytime you have a minimum wage you uh, law, you have people that are excluded from the workforce that are just unemployable at the way at whatever the minimum wage is. Yeah. Um, and that, and that shuts a door for them. You can say, well, those are slave wages. Nobody can live off that blah, blah, blah. But it's a door. It's a, it's still an open door. Mm -hmm. There's a, 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 cause you have to get your foot in the door somehow. Yeah. Um, and it, it puts a ceiling on people. Yeah. Or I guess. It yeah, be a, no, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it creates an artificial ceiling. It does it essentially taxes employment 
which yeah. also will reduce employment. I yeah. mean, we know that generally, you know, just economics applied all the way around. Yeah. Um, if you put a tax on something, you get less of it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. And if you subsidize something, you get more of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is why in this case, they're taxing employment, yeah. getting less of it, and yeah. subsidizing unemployment. Yeah, right. <laughs> so getting more of it, and yeah. you know, you talk about the slave wages thing too. Um, that nobody could live off of this. Well, if you didn't have minimum wage laws, prices would generally be down too. Because that's um, very true. That's a side I hadn't really considered of that. But you're right because the, because you're artificially raising the cost of producing whatever. So um, we hadn't got. I don't know if we even really was going to talk about it. But there's um, a new bill that the Democrats are pushing. I don't know all the details of it, but they were talking about how they plan to pay for it and. Um, one of the things they want, they had a multitude of taxes they're planning on raising, but the one that struck me was the corporate tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, and because I, that just immediately hit me, like that's going to cause more inflation. Yep. Um, I mean, that prices have to go up. I mean, if you're going to raise taxes on businesses, businesses aren't going to pay that tax. Yeah. The consumers are. It's just the way it works. Well, and there's a lot of businesses. I don't think that people realize how small margins are in a lot of businesses. Oh yeah, I mean this it's it's tiny mm -hmm. they, because and a, a lot of people just assume that these are big corporations just raking it in. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're not. I mean, the the mar the margin of error is small. Like corporations go under all the time. Yeah. Um, and and it's because they 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 run on a small margin. Like yeah. they've. Um, we, so in my business, a lot of it is that, you know, like we're providing work to contractors and so, and so forth through, uh, we're essentially a third party provider of, um, of work, uh, to, uh, to contractors that we bring in. Yeah. Um, and we take a percentage yeah. and that's where our money comes from. Right. Like, so yeah. the contractor gets a percentage and we get a percentage. It's not a very big percentage to begin with. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've had a lot of people that I've had to talk through this, particularly employees, not so much the contractors because they get their portion and they're either happy with that and they stay or they're not and they don't work for us anymore. But yeah. um, people, you know, inside the office, they're like, well, you know, we make such and such a percent off of this. I mean, that's, you know, I, I see what these invoices are. That's a lot of money. Well, yeah, but there's rent on the building. There's power. There's all the internet services. There's the, the hardware and the software. Um, the, you, got, you got to have the infrastructure like, yeah. it, because it's the same way with, with restaurants mm -hmm. and stores and all of these things. Like you can see, you can see what the bottom, I mean, you, there's the infrastructure is expensive, mm -hmm. Like you got to have these things, you yeah. know? Um, so that's, that's, that's a factor. <laughs> yeah. And so in the end, like the percentage that we actually, the, that's profit, the bottom line. Yeah. It's not really that high. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and these kind of small, uh, like, you know, a 5% corporate tax hike yeah. can have a real impact. Yeah, yeah. And when you talk about your bigger businesses, like, they have no problem passing that. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. any any of these businesses yeah. are going to pass it on to the to the consumer. But mm -hmm. especially, like, the big businesses, they love this yeah. because they've got the wherewithal to withstand this. Yeah. It's just smaller businesses that are going to pay the piper. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in the end, what you end up with is is more Amazons and fewer mom and pops. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, that was a, that was a real rabbit hole there. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I kind of pulled us down that, but it's, it's worth noting when we're kind of mm -hmm. discussing this, that yeah. that's, I mean, that's a thing, you know, you just, you just spoiled one of the Liberty Mike classics that at some point I was going to throw out there. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we can do it. Again. We got I'll like a, fine. we got like a 40 minute episode that was published a long, long time ago that most of you have never heard. Um, about minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. And oh yeah. And I've always I've kept it in the pocket because it was before we were doing things the way we're doing now, so you can't even access it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um. And uh. Yeah. I, it was like some point we're posting that one. Throw this one out there, like <laughs> yeah. when one of us is on vacation or something. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, but moving on. Yeah. Uh. So then, um. Well, actually. Well, no, that's enough, right? Like in yeah. terms of how as a libertarian you can start using this particular situation that people all recognize well not all but most people recognize is a big government overstep and a real problem about federal uh, about governments 
involving themselves in the market yeah. and apply it to smaller things. Yeah. Um, or, you know, uh, issues that, that are more dicey that because yeah. you you you'll know that people especially libertarians that are listening mm -hmm. they've all had that instance where they've been talking to somebody and like then this would be one of those things the vaccine mandate oh yeah. man like yeah it's horrible ridiculous blah, blah, blah. can you believe the government is telling businesses what to do and yeah blah, 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 and you're like yeah I and mean, they do the same but, thing with minimum wage you're like oh well but minimum yeah, wage but, like you like, have like, to people's got to have a wage. living wage yeah, yeah, like exactly. it's it's one of those but it, you it, but it's a good way to get people at least starting to think about like do we really need government? Like, mm -hmm. what do we really need government for? Yeah. You know, um, because that's like his, and it's funny, even talking to most liberals and stuff I know, like they'll rail against government. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, be wanting more government. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's like, a lot of that. have you, have you, have you put these two together yet? Like, <laughs> The, uh, a lot of people don't have as much of an emphasis on maintaining consistency yeah, that yeah. libertarians do. We, it's very true. Um, yeah. I, it, <laughs> like, yeah. it irritates me when um, you're like uh, saying that, well, yeah, DeSantis should outlaw all of these things in his state because they're bad. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's yeah. the same thing as the, <laughs> like, and, and, and that's just among the libertarians and yeah. And so when you're certainly when you're when you're talking with uh, with Republicans or Democrats, like you run into these problems a lot more because they have less of a concern about trying to maintain, yeah. um, uh, you know, a, a real through line. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think part of it is that they look at it as a whole but as, as a collection of policies rather than a, a political philosophy. Yeah. Well, and that is the difference between libertarians and the other two parties is it is mm -hmm. a philosophy. Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a it's it's more than just like mm -hmm. a, a bag of policies. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, we can get on this podcast and we can talk about almost anything. And I don't really have to have looked anything. I, I don't have to read through a bunch of policy papers and so forth yeah. to understand what my position should be on them. Yeah. Well, um, because all I got to do is apply like really simple principles to the yeah. situation. Well, and that's what Ron Paul always did so well, I thought, mm -hmm. which is what made him who he is, is that he could be put in front of any audience and given, uh, um, you know, given a tough question and put it through that libertarian thing yeah. and spit out the right answer. Yeah. You know? What's the way that gives people the most choice? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Nah, that's that's what <laughs> that, I'm going that, with. That is know. the answer. But um, he could spin it in a way that that he uh, at least a lot of times he could pull the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, like he could he could frame it in a way that that was not only correct but it it made everybody in the audience recognize that he was correct about this. You yeah. know, so yeah, he's such a nice guy too. Exactly. Um. So then on on top of this, we have uh, the legal like how they're pushing this through. Um, a, a legal justification. We're just talking about those White House attorneys um, mm -hmm. that are trying to figure out how to make it it okay to have vaccine mandates. Yeah. Um, and so there's a couple of things that have come up. I was listening to uh, an interview with Alan Dershowitz, um, who is you know one of the preeminent constitutional lawyers, yeah. um, and he's you know he's a professor emeritus at Harvard and so on and so forth, and pretty well respected. Yeah. Um, despite the uh, um, the Epstein connection. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't realize there was an Epstein connection. There's here. an Epstein connection. Oh, okay. <laughs> but what? That aside. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was talking about two things primarily when I, I was listening to him. Um, uh, there was a Supreme Court decision in 1905 um, about smallpox vaccines. Now, this was a, a state mandate. Um, or, or the mandate originated at the state level. Yeah. Um, and it was appealed up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court uh, sided with the state. Um, that they said, you know, in the interest of public health or whatever, that they could mandate smallpox vaccines. Um, now, of course, uh, just to begin with, the, the danger of any of these things, and, and maybe a, a point that should be made to people, is that there is nowhere in the Constitution where it says that all of these rights are subject to be taken away in case of an emergency. Right. <laughs> yeah. That clause is not in there. Um, I looked. Yeah. And the other thing is that if you allow that to be a justification, there's always something that's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
And if you still think that COVID is an emergency at this point, you're not really paying attention to the data. It's yeah. not. Besides the fact that a, a study just came out that said somewhere between 40 and 50% of COVID hospitalizations weren't COVID hospitalizations. Yeah. They were people who tested positive while in the hospital. Yeah. Um, and so that means that there were people that uh, came into the hospital for other things. And right now, of course, anytime you go into the hospital for anything, you're getting, tested. Uh, you're getting tested for COVID. So they came into the hospital for other things and they tested positive for COVID. That's now a COVID hospitalization. Yep. Also, there were people that got COVID while they were in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a hospital, uh, a COVID hospitalization as well on this data. Yeah. So nearly half of all COVID hospitalizations weren't about COVID. It's propaganda. Yeah. It's it's all just trying to to make you believe this narrative, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but there is danger in this legal precedent because courts don't like to reverse previous court decisions. Yep. Um, and there is this pervasive idea that, and this is, comes back to the religion of the state stuff. Yeah. That somehow the state is infallible. <laughs> that whatever decision it makes is the right decision. Yeah. But you can point out a whole lot of decisions that the Supreme Court even has <laughs> made in the past that we would not agree with now. Yeah. So just because they made a decision in the past doesn't mean that it's the right thing. Oh, well. um, because, you know, at one point in the past, the Supreme Court made the decision that people could be property of other people. Yeah, right. How, how does that hold up now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, certainly nobody's going to back that up and say, well, you know, it's, there's a legal precedent for this, so it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. But they'll have no problem pulling the smallpox thing and saying that that makes a precedent. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, but the the truth of the matter is that even though the Supreme Court has made this decision in the past that public health was trumps your rights, that doesn't make it the right decision. Absolutely. And and I would argue really strongly that it's not. Um, that there is a, a moral and ethical question about the government mandating the government interfering. Not just with private business at this point, but with bodily autonomy. Yeah, because that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, you know? um, that I get to I get to make my own health care decisions. Yeah, yeah, and and like so, we as libertarians talk about all the time. You know, we should have the right to put anything we want in our body. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something I really like believe in. Um, but this this goes a step further. Like this isn't even a question of what you put in your body and what you don't. Like mm -hmm. this is this is a medical decision. Yeah. You know. Going back to the rape thing. Yeah. Um, you should have the right to refuse something being put into your body as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that was a big deal with Harvey Weinstein. Like, <laughs> be, like, people didn't want him putting stuff in their body to keep their job. He wasn't really. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. We, we won't get into the details of that one. You know, we never just, really talked about that. We never really did. Yeah. <laughs> just let that one go right on by. That was fine. Sometimes you got to let stuff slide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So he, he's talking about that as a justification. And then the other thing that he mentioned, and I, like I may have misunderstood this because it was phrased weird, mm -hmm. but my understanding of what he said is that they're also using the interstate commerce clause in the Constitution. Really? As a justification because the virus doesn't respect borders. <laughs> and so it's crossing borders from state to state. Yeah. What this has to do with commerce. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, are we selling it? <laughs> I have no idea. Like that that's just absurd. <laughs> yeah. Um and you know, it might be worth so there are two clauses in the constitution that are misused more than any other, I think. And they are the interstate commerce clause and the general welfare clause. Yeah. Now, both of these things were supposed to be restrictions on the federal government, but they've been used to justify government interference. Yeah. Um so the interstate commerce clause was about uh the federal government preventing the states from putting undue burden on other states moving goods across their borders. Yeah. Right? So um, what it was really about was that the federal government could stop Pennsylvania from putting tariffs on New Jersey's goods yeah. or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. Like that's what it was really about. It was about preventing um, governments from restricting the free flow of goods across the borders between the states. Yeah. That's what it was for. Um, but what it has, has been used for repeatedly yeah. in the past several centuries, a yeah. um, couple of centuries anyway, is, uh, is to, to say that the, government, the federal government has jurisdiction over anything that's crossing 
borders, yeah. state borders. Yeah. That it can make its own legislation about goods crossing borders from state to state. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not not the idea we yeah, had. Yeah. Not mind. what it was meant to do. <laughs> yeah. It was meant to be restrictive, not inclusive. Yeah. Um. And then the general welfare clause more or less works the same way. The general welfare clause again was a restriction on what the federal government could do. Uh, essentially, it was there to restrict the federal government from legislating in such a way to benefit one state at the expense of another. Yeah. All right. Um, so the general welfare clause was supposed to be to, to make sure that the federal government didn't create a, um, a law that, um, that was beneficial to Virginia at the expense of Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. That would cost Maryland and, and benefit Virginia. Yeah. It was supposed to be, it, essentially it says that, any um, any legislation must be equally beneficial. No, that's not quite right. That that's definitely not the right way to say that. Um, that it couldn't favor a particular state. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, that's something that has been misused over the years uh, to say that anything that the federal government does is okay as long as it benefits the general welfare of the citizens of the United States. Yeah. In their opinion, actually. <laughs> right. yeah, like, who exactly. decides who, who's, so who's really benefiting, too? So it's already kind of on, you know... One-sided. It's, it's like a specious argument to begin with, um, and then it's being misused as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that kind of brings us to this, uh, what's going on now with the rationing of the Regeneron therapy, the monoclonal antibody therapy. Yeah. So uh, it's been championed by DeSantis in Florida, yeah. um, and they set up a bunch of uh, Regeneron infusion clinics. And we have here in, in Alabama as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the, the government purchased the treatments. The federal government purchased the treatments, but um, for a long time until the beginning of this month, beginning of September, um, they were allowing uh, the states and the um, and the individual healthcare providers to make their own orders from the distributors and so forth. Yeah. Um, so what they did at the beginning of this month is that they took control over that again. So now um, orders have to go through the federal government. Uh, yeah before they go to the distributor and are then sent out to the states. So the federal right. government can decide which states are allowed to have this and which ones aren't. Yeah, and how much. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and I think that there's a pretty strong case to be made that that, uh, that kind of rationing from the federal government um, violates both the Interstate Commerce Clause <laughs> and the General Welfare Clause. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, and, and you have to wonder, and I don't think that it is, but you have to wonder if this is, if this is somehow related to the threat that Biden made when he gave his speech, um, about the mandates, uh, the threat that he made that he was going to take down governors that were hostile to his plan, yeah. um, essentially. Uh, so, you know, holding the lives of the citizens of these various states at ransom yeah, to ensure that the governors comply with what he wants. I told now, you. I don't think that that's what it is. Like, I, I do want to yeah. be clear that I don't. I don't think that anybody thought it through like that. Well, um, but may, maybe not. But I'll I'll say this, and it just is just kind of we haven't played any clips from that speech he made. But um, he that was, I tell you that we was read some quotes last week. Yeah, that that speech was one of the most like harsh and and very just. I'm trying to think of the word to describe it, but just. <sighs> Um, authoritarian. Yeah, that's that's actually the word I was looking for. Yeah. Um, speech I've ever heard a U.S. president, at least in my time, make. Yeah. Especially directed to its own towards its own citizens. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm I'm t like I, I I agree with you that that's probably not the way that this was intended to play out. Mm -hmm. But you can't discount it. Yeah. I and mean, and whether it was intended or not, it's yeah. a possibility. Yeah. Uh, you know, them having this kind of power does put them in a position where they can actually hold yeah. these the citizens of these states' lives for ransom. Yeah. And that that should be frightening to anybody in this country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. And so, um, 
I think that this all leads back to a question that you started, that you asked earlier, which is like, what really is the purpose of government? Yeah. Like, what is it supposed to be doing? Yeah. Um, now, yeah. I don't know that I have a good answer for it because if I had my way, <laughs> it wouldn't be doing much. <laughs> <laughs> we would tear the whole thing down right now. And of course, yeah. it all, you know, there's, there's a semantic part of this too. Like, how do you define a government? Yeah. Like, is my homeowners association a government? Well, yeah. I mean, to some extent they are. Yeah. Um, any kind of, uh, you know, we've, we've frequently drawn the line between leaders and rulers on this podcast. Um, that, uh, that leaders are, um, are followed voluntarily. Uh, rulers aren't, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I th- still think that that applies. Uh, I think, of course, the more you can divide down, the more you can decentralize, the better off you are. Yeah. Um, the the less power. There will always be some, even us as anarchists would recognize, there's going to be some form of government. Now, yeah. it may not be government the way we consider government now. Yeah, maybe but, some form of governance. Yeah, that's that's probably the better way to put it. But but that's always going to be there. Mm-hmm. But the whole idea is, at least what we tried to talk about on this podcast, is you want that to be local. Because yeah. you as an individual can have an impact on your local government. Mm-hmm. Me as an individual can't really have an impact on what Joe Biden decides he's going to decree from Washington. Yeah, at least not until this podcast gets way bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's going to take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. No, and, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that they do very poorly. Um, certainly, uh, health care seems to be one of them. Um, well, and you, you have the to whole ask idea yourself, that, what does government do well, though? Like, what can... That what, was a question that Harry Brown used to ask people all the time. And it's a uh, good one. Yeah. And most times people couldn't really give an answer. Like, no. what is the program that government does that you think that they do well? Yeah, yeah. And most people are stumped. Yeah. I mean, I, that's part of what brought me to where I am today. Yeah. <laughs> like, is, is that question right there is, you know, what, what, I mean, just name it, tell me, mm-hmm. you know. I, now I, I can name some things that they, that they do fairly well, but none of them are positive. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, <laughs> good point. Like, yeah, there's, there's yeah. definitely, I mean, they do do a lot of things well, you're right, but it's not, it's not for the betterment mm-hmm. of society. Yeah. You know. It doesn't promote the general welfare. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know what the answer really is to that question. I, I think that the, to me, if you have a federal government in this country, the, it has essentially two purposes. Um, and one is to settle disputes between state governments. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's um, fair. And uh, to um, engage with, Foreign governments, yeah, yeah. Uh, on which, behalf of the collective of the yeah. states, which is how this country was initially set up. Like mm-hmm. that was supposed to be the role of the federal government. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I mean, yeah, essentially, you yeah. know. Um, but it's it's we're way beyond that. But mm-hmm. but that's part of what brought me to where I am today is because even if you give a government that much, just minimal basic power. Mm-hmm. I mean, look where you are in a couple of hundred years. Yeah. I mean, my mom asked me, we were talking about some of the stuff. Actually, we talk about a lot of the stuff a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were talking about this a, a while back and mom said, well, you know, well, who, who was the first president that like stepped beyond their constitutional limitations? I was like, George Washington. It was the first one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the very first president. <laughs> what was his happened, name again? <laughs> <laughs> it happened immediately. Yeah. Um, you know, and and every single president has stepped beyond their their constitutional limitations. Yeah, as far I, as I, I know, would, I mean, there's some there's some odd there's some oddities like I, that I can't think of. Um, you know what they did necessarily was it uh, John um, Taylor? Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, uh, one term president that is that I can't think of anything specifically yeah. that he did to step beyond his constitutional limitations. Yeah. Um, I would say Andrew it, Jackson was really good on some things and really terrible on some other things. Yeah. Um, and that's how most of them have gone. Uh, yeah. now in the last, I was going to say at least half century, our, I don't think that they've cared about their constitutional limitations at all. No. And I would say at least in our generation that the next one, has been substantially worse than the previous. Yeah. Like they they've over each one has 
has taken what the one before had done Mm -hmm. and took it another step further and another step further. Now, I'm not well-versed in history enough to tell you how far back that goes, Mm -hmm. but I mean, at least as far as starting with Reagan, I would say. Yeah. Um, And I mean, now that I think about it, of course, I think Wilson, uh, Woodrow Wilson was the worst president. Yeah, um, I think I think you have to give him that mantle. Yeah, I mean, there's there's an argument to be made for FDR. Yeah, the, oh, there is like um, definitely like runner up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, these are particularly Wilson. I think really set us on a path of um, executives overstepping their authority. Yeah, um, yeah. and assuming authority that they that they really have no justification for. Yeah. Federal um, income tax, man. That's all you guys say. Federal Reserve also. <laughs> Federal Reserve. Yeah, that's right. The Yeah, exactly. Those are both set us on the course for where we're at now. And speaking of, we're talking about raising the debt ceiling again. Our, <laughs> our, how frequently does this happen? Every few years. It's, it's, it's um, a lot. Yeah. And our, the big threat, so I was watching the news the other night, and the, the, the big threat came up is, you know, if we don't do something, there may be another government shutdown. <laughs> And it's and both parties are like, oh well, we 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 can't have another shutdown, and, and they're already positioning themselves to blame the other. Yeah. Well, uh, what's funny about the government shutdowns is the only person that's ever adversely affected by the government shutdown is government employee, and right. in the end, they, they get always, all their money back anyway. I was fixing to say, and but there are some like low paid federal employees that don't get their uh, paychecks for a little while that yeah, are that need that'll it. struggle. Yeah. Um. But yeah. in the end, what ends up happening is they just got a paid vacation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and well, the rest of us are like, oh, I didn't even notice the government I was didn't shut even down. know the government was shut down. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. yeah, because all the essential, and I'm using quotes here, essential services are mm-hmm. not going to, like, the cops are still going to be patrolling the streets. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to drive my car as fast as I want to without the threat of um, violence. <laughs> yeah. That's all they do. I can go off on that, too. But, um mm-hmm. Well, and you're right. So the debt ceiling debate that comes up every three years or however frequently it comes up, yeah. um, it's it's a huge fundraising scam for the two major parties. Yeah. That's really what it's about. They set up this, this imagined conflict um, so that they can go to their bases and say, hey, look what the other side is trying to do. Yep. Um, they're trying to spend all of your money or they're trying to shut the government down or whatever. Yep. And like, you need to give us money so that we can get more of our people in. We've in 20, got to stand against this in 2022, which is just next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> coincidentally. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so that we can get more of our people in, in office next year so that we can prevent this kind of thing in the future. Yeah. The and timing in, of this is not an accident. No. And in the end, everybody will get their way. They'll yep. raise the debt ceiling like they do every single time. Yep. Um, all the government employees that were laid off or furloughed or whatever, they'll come back to work. They'll get all their back pay. Yep. Um, and nothing nothing really happens in the end except they spend a whole lot more of your money. Yep. And if you... I, I recommend people uh, look up the debt clock. Okay. Go to the debt clock. Um, I, I don't remember if that's what it's called exactly, but I, I'm pretty sure if you put debt clock into Google or Quant or Bing it or whatever, um, yeah. you'll it'll take you to the right place. And it's got a bunch of fancy graphics. It kind of assaults the eyes, honestly. But just like look at how quickly that n- those numbers are ticking up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's more or less. I mean, it's not really done in real time, but yeah. like averaged out. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. And it's it's insane. And so I, I did some calculations the other day on the debt clock site. Yeah. And this is what I came up with. The current national debt is a, a little over $85,000 per resident. Oof. That's like every man, woman, child. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Every, yeah. Every person in this country, every man, woman, child, and, um, whatever else you call yourself, you know, um, $85,000 per, that's insane per resident. Yeah. Yeah, Like I'm not even just counting us citizens per resident of the United States. Now. So then I went hunting some more for, let's try and put this in context a little bit. Yeah. Um, the median household income 
according to HUD, no. uh, is roughly seventy-eight and a half thousand dollars a year. <laughs> now, as far as I could tell, that was a really high estimate yeah. because independent um, calculations are generally less than sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah. All right, but we'll we'll take the HUD's number. Yeah. Just for the sake of argument. Yeah. So the debt is eighty-five thousand dollars per resident. The average median household income is seventy-eight half and a half thousand dollars. We'll say seventy-nine. <laughs> we'll go ahead and round we'll it up round to it eighty. Up. Let's round up. Yeah, yeah, round it up to eighty. So, and like I said, that's household. So that doesn't even represent every resident. Yeah. So if every person in this country yeah. paid every dollar that they made next year to the federal government to pay down the debt, yeah. we still wouldn't hit zero. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's everybody in this country paid every dollar they made. Yeah, that's that's we still wouldn't hit zero. It's in fact, like you just you can't you can't wrap your head around how big that number is. Yeah, like there's there's no way to ever pay that. Like mm -hmm. there's there's just no way. Yeah, and that's your government at work. Yeah. So yeah. how? Just think about how and they're just benefiting. Think, and they're just and they're wanting to take more of your money. Mm -hmm. Like why? Why even and bother? It'll never be enough. Why even bother? Prove like it, right why there. don't they just like stop collecting taxes? Period. And just do whatever they just print it or whatever they like. Why even have the charade? Uh, the hidden tax. Why even have the charade of paying taxes? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but it's because that's all it's it is. To keep up with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's a control mechanism. Like mm -hmm. the the IRS is a control mechanism. Yeah. So, um, another thing that government does really well, besides yeah. spend money, yeah. that they don't have, yeah. Um, again, not positive. Yeah. Is war. Yeah. And so, and I was thinking about this this morning because, um, I was listening to a guy and he was talking about uh, that you know we needed to move as as a species. Yeah. We needed to move beyond war, that we need to engage higher functions to solve our conflicts and get away from the reptile brain. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is going to sound trite, but um, I thought, oh, how cute. He thinks that war is because of the reptile brain. Yeah. And, I, and I think that actually probably a lot of people do think of uh, that we engage in war for the same reasons that you get in a fight with somebody, right? Yeah. That, you know... Aggression, reptile brain engaged, you know, not thinking about it. Yeah. But here's here's it's, what I think is really true. Yeah. Um, that it is absolutely a frontal lobe calculation yeah. by a small group of people of how to benefit by risking or sacrificing the lives of other people. Yeah. It is not well, a reptile brain thing. It is not a, like lack of control, instinctive thing. It is a very calculated move, war is. Yeah. War is the 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 realm of government. Yeah. Only government engages in war. Yeah. Well, you can have fights. You can have big fights. Like, you can have yeah. fights between groups of people, family feuds, and what have you. Yeah. But none of it has the same kind of cost um, in any way you want to calculate it, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as war and war is purely the domain of governments. It is yeah. governments disagreeing with each other and governments sending their citizens to fight that. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't care about you. Oh yeah. No, it's the same thing I keep um, harping on with the vaccine. Government doesn't care about us like in any way, shape or form, whether it comes to our health or, or sending us to war or anything like that. Like the, the government, it, the government doesn't care about you and there, there's no, there's no incentive for them to mm -hmm. like, I mean, they, they have all the power over you. Like why, why, why would they bother? Well, and, and so that's another point that's probably worth making is that they have all the power over you because we allow it. Yeah. Oh, it's true. And you don't have to. And yeah. so I think, I guess what I would do is I would urge everybody listening to this to really like sit down and think for some time about what it is that you think is the role of government and what you think our government does that actually benefits you. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe do a little, uh, you know, pros and cons kind of thing. Yeah. Like if you come up with some things that government does that benefits you, I know. then what. turn around and start listing some of the things that the government does that is a detriment to you. 
Yeah. And see where you come out. Well, and take an honest assessment of those things that you think benefit you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, I mean, like you can on the surface say that X, Y, or Z is a benefit to you personally by Mm -hmm. the government, but then really kind of dive in and, and think hard about those things. And if those things didn't exist, what the world may look would look like. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think that probably one that comes up regularly is public school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, they're educating my kids for free. Yeah. Well, first off, it's not free. You're paying for first it. First off, it's not, they're not educating them either. <laughs> and that's, the, yeah, that's the other side of it. Yeah. Um, do you, do you feel that what your children are getting out of public school is actually worth the time and the cost? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, there's, there's better ways. And, and Hey, my, both my kids are in public school, so I'm not, I mean, that it's just the reality, but I'm not saying that it's the best place for them. Like yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I'm really opposed to it cause I don't even have any kids in public school and I'm still paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you. Yeah, right. Mm. So. And, um, you know, we, so I did a bunch of, um, little writings on this when I was running for board of education yeah. and, uh, a public school education costs more per student than a private school education yeah. and a private school, um, on the average, has much better results yeah. than public school education does. Oh, without question. And at less, at a lower cost. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to the, uh, you know, the quote that I use a lot on this where, um, was it Camus? I, I don't remember who said it. I'm, no, I think it was Benjamin Constant. Um, said something along the lines of, uh, whenever government does our business for us, they do it worse than we would and at greater cost. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's across the board. Any, Mm -hmm. any, any category of government interaction, Mm -hmm. like it's all the same. I mean, but we are at a, at a real point where it's time for people to maybe start making some decisions and picking sides here. Um, and I don't mean picking sides like, do you want to be in a red state or a blue state or a Republican or a Democrat or a conservative or a liberal? Uh, I, I think more on along the lines of, um, do you want to side with liberty or authoritarianism? Well, do you want to side with the people or with the government, that's, with the elites? That's what I was fixing to say. It's 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 time for people to pick their corner. It's us or the government. And if you want to be on the side of the government, fine, but know that you're on the other side. Yeah. And I, well, I don't want to make that kind of pronouncement. Like I hope yeah. that people recognize that they pick the wrong side at some point. And you're welcome back over here. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. It, well, I'm not saying we won't welcome you back when you make that wrong decision, but yeah. but it is us versus the government. Yeah. Like, and and it and it always really has been. And, um, and not, when I say that, I'm, I'm not calling for any kind of call to violence. I don't want it to mm-hmm. be taken that way. But it's time but to start. time to dis- make a stand. Well, it's time to start disobeying. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I would stand on yeah. this. It's, um, it's disobey. Like, it's mm-hmm. time. The mask mandates, the lockdowns, the vaccine mandates. It's time to say no. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you said last week that I really like, although I think it's hard to get people on board with this kind of thing, but I, I, I love the idea. Um, is when you said that when, uh, when it comes to these questions by your employer about your vaccine status or whatever, whether you're vaccinated or not, say it's none of your business. Absolutely. Just refuse to answer. Absolutely. Because it's none of their business. It is. Exactly. And the law's on your side there. Now, whether or not a court will stand with you or not is another mm-hmm. question, but HIPAA exists like that. You, you have the right to not answer these type of questions. Yeah. And the vaccine is no different than what we were saying on the last mm-hmm. podcast about pregnancy or anything else. Yeah. Like this is, this is your personal business. Yeah. Your, your health care, your health status is between you and your doctor Yeah, and anybody else you choose to share it with. But the only people that, that need to know yeah. are you and your doctor. Exactly. Exactly. And you can refuse that information to anybody else. Yep. Yep. And we need that. We need, we need everybody to kind of stand up at least a majority and disobey. Like that's, that's, yeah. that's what it's going to take. We're, we're not going to fix, we're not going to fix this problem through violence. Like mm-hmm. there's no, we're not going to go storm the Capitol. Like, yeah. I that's, mean, we don't have F-16s and atomic bombs. Exactly. But we can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we can disobey. Mm-hmm. And if enough people do it, they will back off. I mean, they just will, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, UK did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
So. Um, they, yeah, the the UK did. Um, and, and you know, if if specifically the coronavirus has you scared, and you think, oh, you know, well, we need these vaccines, we need these boosters, and so forth, just look at inside the government how much disagreement there apparently is. Yeah. You had almost twenty people resign from the FDA uh, in the last couple of weeks, last week maybe. I don't remember exactly when. Um, yeah. Over the booster question. Yeah. Um, that well, they were opposed to the government's position on boosters, on on, um, and they well, said, saw, you know, we're not going to be a part of this. I saw today that I guess that I, that you just made me think of it that I got a headline that the um, FDA voted down the Pfizer booster. Um, so, but that now the headline even read that they'll reconsider it like in a month or something. Yeah. But um, but initially it was voted down. Yeah. Um, there's so much unknown. I mean, we can go on about vaccines all day. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the uh, see, okay. So I'm pretty sure that that's one of the clips that I pulled that we forgot to bring in here and uh, like, yeah. um, whatever it was uh, um, Fauci talking about uh, the case for why people who have had the virus should get vaccinated oh, and he was is... like i don't have a good answer for you and then he said well but you know we don't know how long um the uh the natural immunity lasts but they don't and know the how response long. was like yeah but you don't know how long the vaccine immunity lasts exactly and the whole thing is has been you know begging the question anyway like even like that whole bit um, was about, uh, well, you know, um, people who had had the vaccine started getting sick, uh, after about six months. So that's how long the vaccine lasts. Yeah. Well, maybe it's the vaccine didn't work at all. And six months <laughs> and later is six when months to get sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I, you know, it, like the whole thing assumes that the vaccine works and the whole booster idea assumes that the vaccine works too. Um, it, it again, it begs the question, uh, because the, what they say is, well, you know, um, after this amount of time, you've had two two doses of the vaccine. You can you can start getting sick again. Well, obviously, you just need more of the vaccine. Yeah, right. Well, it just worries me how much they're doping people up with this thing. Mm. Like, I mean, I, like I say, I don't I, I don't know that much about the the specifics on what the vaccine. I mean, I just I, but it's scary to think that they're just like forcing this information with this much propaganda this hard. Yeah. Like there's, there's no, I just, I, I don't get it, man. Like something, something else is going on here. Like there's no question about that. Well, um, when I was, uh, when I was asking people at work about the rape thing, yeah. um, one of the guys up there said that, uh, that about the worst, and th this was his case of why murder was worse, by the way. Okay. Um, he said, I think about the worst thing you can do somebody is, is theft of choice. Yeah. And he said, you know, um, rape is theft of one choice. Murder is theft of the rest of the choices. Yeah. And, and that's why he, that's, he said that. But the, just the idea that theft of choice is a really important. prominent crime. Yeah. yeah. Um, that it is, uh, you know, top of the heap. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like that idea. No, yeah. I mean, well, it's it's true. I mean, it's once you start taking people's choices away, you're living under slavery. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's let's call it what it is. Yeah. Like it's a know. it's a matter of degree, not of kind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, we actually run pretty long here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and we got a really late start, so let's wrap it up. Unless you got something else you want to. No, no. Um, I will. I, I, as we were talking, I got to thinking about what we talked about at the beginning, and I do freely use the R word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take that as however you want. But I will say which this. one, retarded or raped? Both. Okay. <laughs> but um, but I will say this. I do pick what kind of company I would use that word in. Yeah. Like it is like well, I, I don't go out of my way to offend no. people well, most, me, most well, of the time. Sometimes I do. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean but, me too. But it, it also setting has a lot to do with it. So mm -hmm. like in the business setting, I would absolutely say the the using the word retarded in the business setting is inappropriate. Yeah. Well it's just like how you know you have to make a decision about uh, what kind of um, drink you're gonna order at a bar. Yeah. Depending on what kind of bar it is. Yeah. Like if you go into a dive bar you don't order a martini. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You you order something in a glass. That's actually my <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's, that's a good my, rule. I just I just want whiskey in a glass. Yeah. Clean yep. glass, please. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so um
Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like context yeah. matters. Yeah, like absolutely. Setting matters. But but the reason all of that came off as absurd as it did to me is because you were on an internet game forum. Yeah. <laughs> like, to to think that's not the forum to use that word is just absurd. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just wanted to say that. I got to thinking as we went through the podcast. I'm trying to think of where I would restrict myself from using that word. Not rape. Like I can't think of a very <laughs> I would use to, to restrict that word. But the but the other R word, like there are definitely settings where yeah. I would not use that word. Like I wouldn't use that when I'm interacting with my employees and stuff. Yeah, I okay. I I, I get that. Um there's right. uh there is decorum, I believe in decorum. Yeah. Um, yeah, me too. I mean, I'm I'm pretty anarchist, but I do believe in. in yeah, that. no, I, yeah. I believe in decorum. There, yeah. there's an appropriate place, you know, for things, or there's an appropriate way of behaving in certain settings. Yeah, um, that's absolutely true. I do not believe in no no words, though. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is off limits. Words are yeah. there to. It's to it's be used. a little different though when you're dealing with the public. Like you don't. I, I mean, I, I absolutely would say it's a little different when you're dealing with the public. Like there's mm -hmm. like language, like especially like foul language, like that's mm -hmm. never inappropriate in a business setting, I think. Yeah. Like I, I go. Oh, there used to be a time when you could get thrown out of a store for cursing. Yeah. Oh, that time still exists in my, in my store. Yeah. <laughs> like well, if, uh, for customers? Oh, absolutely. Really? Like, yeah. If you, uh, and it's the one thing if they're just joking around with, with it just in the store and, and one thing, just talking to other customers. But if they're, once you start throwing power language at my employees, mm. you are out of the building, period. Absolutely no questions asked. Yeah. Like, I, okay. I, I don't tolerate that because these people work here. They don't have to put up with that. I mean, that's, and I believe that. Like, that's, yeah. that's a, okay. No, yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. I just meant in general, actually, just like oh, using yeah. cursors. Well, yeah, I mean, the, if if there's if you got a group of people in there and they're just kind of cutting up, having a good time, I'm not, I'm never gonna say anything to mm -hmm. them. Well, generally, I won't say I won't ever say anything to them. But if I'm getting complaints, I'll say something. But I'm still <laughs> not gonna, that, I'm still not gonna kick them lady out. There, though. she doesn't like those words. Yeah. Well, if I have <laughs> a stop. parent, if I have a parent come up and like say something about a group of people mm -hmm. in the store using a bunch of foul language, I may go address in it with the group, her, her toddler that's gonna yeah. go home and repeat it over and over exactly and over again for the rest of the night yeah. yeah and now i may i may say something i'm still <laughs> probably not going to kick them out mm -hmm. but um but if they're but and this happens Just not be mindful of the other people in the store yeah sure. yeah but um yeah but it happens fairly regularly i'll have somebody getting ugly with an employee using mm -hmm. using foul and, and and i don't let them get ugly with my employees anyway but once mm -hmm. you start dropping bombs mm -hmm. <laughs> like f bombs like yeah you're yeah. you're out we're not we're not doing that yeah. so okay Yep. I will try to watch my language on this podcast. <laughs> we do a pretty good job. I have to contain myself sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I think we've only used the uh the our version of the bleep like once. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard sometimes, but I but I try to keep it. You know, the person who's cursed the most on this podcast is actually Scott Horton in one interview. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, he don't have much of a filter. <laughs> I'm disrespecting more because of it. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to bleep him. I didn't. I put yeah. it up just as it was, man. There's yeah. no way I was editing that guy. Oh yeah. Oh, never. <laughs> never. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, that'll do it then. Now, now we've run really long. All right. Um. So, uh, as usual, um, we ask that you follow us where you can follow us, which is Facebook, I guess. Is that the only one now? I guess that's the only one. Yeah. Um, and then you can subscribe, which is bigger than follow, <laughs> on uh, iTunes, Podbean, uh, YouTube, and yeah. or. Yeah. Um, like and share, uh, comment. Uh, you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike if you have any recommendations or comments or anything of the sort. Um, yeah, that pretty well covers it. Yeah, I guess that I guess that's it. And uh, we're doing good so far, but uh, I, both of our work lives are getting a little crazy yeah, right now. It's, this, um, it's amazing that at least in my case that we got this together this week. Yeah, because <laughs> this was definitely a week it could have not happened. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm for me, I'm thinking the next week and the week after are probably going to be the the your, worst, your toughest weeks. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's assuming that no more storms come through. Right. <laughs> um. So, but as it stands, 
um, I, I can kind of do my work whenever. So I feel like I, we should be able to cut out some time. Yeah. Um, to do a podcast, how prepared I will be to do that podcast <laughs> is another question, but, um, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Though. So we expect to get some content to you guys next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.